Every once in a while, we have some really tough workouts to get through. And this week, I did one of those workouts and I recorded it. I thought I would just kind of do a reaction video and share with you my thoughts about the workout, how I got through it, some of my strategies, some tips, tricks, pointers, all of that. And before we jump in, I'd love to give a quick shout out to Ice Barrel. When Ice Barrel first contacted me about being a sponsor, for my videos. I thought this would just be really cool, a nice collaboration. Ice baths are good for fitness, yada, yada, yada. I didn't really know anything about it. And so I did a couple of months of, of ice baths, just sort of sporadically and you know, make sure I got a video. But then just over a year ago, I started doing an ice bath every single morning. Uh, in as cold of water as possible. It started around 60 degrees and then dropped down to 50. Now I do a consistent ice bath every morning for three minutes at 46 degrees. And Ice Barrel has been like a game changer in my world. I wake up and I am sore often. I'm a little bit achy just because I'm training at a high level. And when I get in that, I feel invigorated. It's hard, but then after three minutes, we jump out and I feel absolutely amazing every single time. But man, thank you, Ice Barrel. Appreciate the sponsorship. And if you're interested in getting your own Ice Barrel, use my link. I've got it right here for you. Give it 30 days and I guarantee you will absolutely love it. Now let's get into this video. What I first did, of course, is I opened up beyond the whiteboard and the Boulder Athlete section here. And I want to know what the workout actually is when I put workouts into beyond the whiteboard here. I try to be as detailed as possible as to what the workout actually is and provide a clear purpose and intention for the workout as well as strategies and tips to get your way through this workout uh, as well as scaling options, of course. And here's the workout. It's got a lot of high level gymnastics built into it. It's 21 strict handstand pushups into a 50 foot handstand walk, nine ring muscle ups for men, seven for ladies into a 50 foot handstand walk, then 15 strict handstand pushups, 50 foot handstand walk, seven or five ring muscle ups, 50 foot handstand walk, then nine strict handstand pushups, 50 foot handstand walk, and you finish with five or three ring muscle ups. As you can imagine, we are pushing a lot in this workout, pushing on the handstand pushups, pushing on the handstand walk, pushing on the ring muscle ups, which is kind of a pulling movement, but really it is a pushing movement when we come down to it coming out of that ring dip. So as we jump into the workout, my initial goal on this thing uh, was to break up this first set of handstand pushups into eight, seven, six. In fact, I remember when I got to rep eight, I forgot that that was my plan. I just felt good in the handstand pushups, but I knew that I wanted to conserve some energy in my shoulders. So I think going into a workout like this, it's very important to have a breakup strategy that's realistic for you. Strict handstand pushups are a pretty strong movement for me, but even with that, all of this effort all together is gonna make my shoulders super fatigued. So I just wanna pace this so I never fail a handstand pushup. So I did successfully get eight, and then seven, I believe this is six. Uh, and it definitely immediately starts to get a little bit spicy. It shouldn't because it's only 21 handstand pushups, but I think maybe my brain was thinking I got some work to do. So I was recording myself on this. It is unedited. This is the good stuff right here, guys. This is how you get your own footage. You gotta move your camera around on your own. And I probably would take a couple of breaths anyway if I wasn't moving a camera. But now I've got a 50 foot handstand walk I was tempted to get to the other side of the gym on this handstand walk. The cone is where the 25 foot mark is. It's gonna pirouette and go back. But again, I wanna stay conservative in my effort here. So I wanna think about going 25 and then 25 on the handstand walk. On the next round, I'll talk about some of the technique and what I'm thinking about with my shoulders on handstand walks. I think it'll help you. But for now, I just wanted to go 25 and 25. And then as I set the camera up and move it over for the ring muscle ups, I'm feeling lots of fatigue in my shoulders. And I'm going to chalk up, which would be standard. This is just gonna be where I'm gonna be catching my breath a little bit, allowing my shoulders to recover from strict handstand pushups and then a 50 foot handstand walk. Because these ring muscle ups, my intention is to go unbroken here. If I was gonna break them up, I'd wanna be moving a little bit faster to the rings, but I think this was an unbroken set in my head, or at least that was gonna be my plan. I'll talk about what I do there with that first ring muscle up, sort of holding that for a second. I'll talk about that in the next set. But all I'm really going for here is to stick with the game plan. Again, eight, seven, six, handstand pushups, 25, 25 on the handstand walk. And then let's get through nine unbroken on these ring muscle ups. And I'll tell you, nine was challenging. 
it was uh, not quite absolute max effort, but I was, uh, was feeling completely. So uh, hopping down, the first chunk of work is done uh, in the sense that I've got major, major parts of this workout done. I've got all of the 21 handstand push-ups done. I've got one 50-foot handstand walk done. I've got nine ring muscle-ups done. Now I'm going to hit this 50-foot handstand walk. Coming up here. And again, there's three of us actually doing this workout. Uh, we're in Birmingham, Alabama, which is in the suburbs in a town called Hoover. And this is at Pivot Fitness. So if you're in the area, hit me up. Uh, come work out with me, particularly on Saturdays. We do kind of a mega session with a bunch of guys on Saturdays out here. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, we're all chipping our way through this. And again, I'm sticking with the plan. The plan is 50 foot hands and have broken up into 25 and 25. Okay, now it's back to oh, handstand push-ups. I'm feeling all the fatigue in my shoulders, but I'm not upset. Uh, I'm going to take my time getting over there. I'm breathing. I am setting up a camera, which is taking up a little bit of time, but I actually want my shoulders to recover a little bit here. And, uh, you know, it's really nice when I have someone that can film for me doing these, but there are times where you just got to do it yourself. So, Great, I've got a good angle of the camera of the pole here, but my plan on this is nine and six on these handstand push-ups. And now I want to talk a little bit about how I'm uh, navigating my breath and uh, sort of my energy on these handstand push-ups. So I am trying to move as quickly as I can through them to minimize the time under tension. So as soon as I'm completely locked out overhead, I'm trying to come back down. And as soon as my head touches the ground, I'm trying to launch back overhead. I'm trying to make sure there's never really a pause on these because the pause is a kiss of death. Like if I've got a pause too long, I'm done. I'm done with the handstand pushups. I also hold my breath on the way down and I explode my breath out as I push up on that handstand pushup. It's similar to something that you would do like on a back squat, up, boys. front squat. Take that deep inhale to get to the bottom and as you explode up you're going to exhale and i actually do that on handstand push-ups and i find them where i'm really fatigued that gives me just that little extra burst of energy on handstand push-ups now on the handstand walks i'm taking a big big deep breath to kick off the handstand walk so right there there's someone cleaning the gym i was actually just making sure she was kind of out of the way across the gym and as i do the handstand walk i take a deep breath and the first couple of steps i'm holding my breath as i gain momentum on that handstand walk. Once I feel the momentum and I feel like I've got um, the movement going, then I'll breathe and catch my breath on the handstand. But I do take a deep breath, hold my breath for a first couple of steps, and then I settle into a breathing pattern because I have that momentum going on the handstand push-up. I meant the handstand walk. It just, we'll just leave this unedited. All right, and nothing can be perfect here, especially when we're talking through a workout like this. But, uh, yeah, the handstand walk. Now we're moving it back over for the ring muscle-ups. Get the camera in place. And again, doing it myself, I'm already going to see that this would not qualify if I was submitting this for an online qualifier because my head's going to be out of the top of this frame. But that's okay. What we're going to see on these ring muscle-ups, I want to talk about this. When I'm tired, I am going for the biggest swing possible. I want as much kip as I can. And I am tired. And I want this to be an unbroken set of seven. So I'm going to need as much out of this kip as possible to get up there. And I'm not catching super duper low on those first few. I'm trying to catch somewhat mid in the dip. And as I get more and more tired, I don't mind catching lower and lower uh, and using that swing to lock out. Now you'll notice at the end of each rep, I turn the rings out just a notch. Boom, just right there. And what I'm doing there is I'm trying to indicate, like if there was a judge, that there's a full lockout. And that's one of the secrets to helping a judge see that you've locked out a ring muscle up, is at the very top. You just do a quick little turnout of the rings, turning them outwards like that. Turn your thumbs out sideways, and it makes it look like you are locked out. In fact, you can't do that little quick turn with, your, with those rings unless your arms are actually locked out. But that makes it really easy for judges to see. You just do that little flash of the rings, turn them out, and let the judge know you've locked out. Now I'm already on my way back on that handstand walk. These were very challenging handstand walks. For those of you that are bolder athletes watching this, uh, yeah, if these handstand walks were tough for you, it's because there's tons of fatigue uh, settling in for these handstand walks. They were really tough. And I can walk on my hands all day, but these 25-foot segments were really, really challenging. 
So yeah. now I've got nine handstand pushups to go. It went 21, then 15. Now I'm on the set of nine and my plan is just to go nine. I know it's going to be pretty tough because the last set of nine, when I did 15, I did nine and six. That was really tough, but let's go nine here. And again, I'm holding my breath and exploding the breath. Hold, explode, held, explode, and keep moving as fast as I can to keep the time under tension on those shoulders to an absolute minimum. That's what I'm trying to do here. I am getting close to failure here, but I got through it. It's great. I always make sure I still flex my toes from the old CrossFit rule where we had to have our heels above the tape line. So I have a, kind of a habit of doing that. Now we're back to the handstand walk. And a tip on this, when you have significant shoulder fatigue um, or at any time when you're doing handstand walks, we wanna be as vertical with our shoulders as possible, as locked out as we can. We wanna minimize any kind of angle, let's see this arm, in our shoulder. We wanna have that arm as locked out as possible. I actually can't straighten my arm at my desk. Locked out so that the weight on our shoulders, the weight on our arms is skeletal. If we have any angle, it's kind of like, imagine, you know, jerking the weight, but it's slightly in front of you. If you jerk and the bar is in front of your head, you're gonna miss it, right? Um, if you handstand walk and your shoulder angle is not just straight above, your arms aren't straight above your head, you're overworking your shoulders. So what I'm trying to do is make sure I get as stacked straight up and down as possible on those handstand walks. And then of course, it is balance and gravity and momentum on handstand walks. It takes a lot of practice to get good at them. Uh, but in order to do them under fatigue, you have to make sure you're getting a very, very good structural lockout. Now we're on the set of five ring muscle ups. On this, you, I want you to watch how I turn those rings out. Just a quick pop at the end to make sure that we are, let's see if I can pause it right. Well, on the first one, actually, let me talk about this first one. What am I doing there? I'm holding that first one up because when I use longer straps, I tend to put myself into some sort of a little swing. And if I do another muscle up right away, that swing is going to get bigger and bigger. And so the rings will be swaying back and forth, which is just awful. I'd rather take one second, let the rings swing forward. And as they swing forward, I fall back and negate the swing once I hit the bottom. So that's that's one little trick I've got there. So let's see if I can show the rings turning out right. There it was. There's a little flick right there just to make sure it looks right there like we are turned out. It doesn't have to be extreme. Again, there it was. It was just right there. I, it's really hard to pause on it. It's just a quick flick. Up, flick, there it is. And that gives the judge the opportunity to know that we are done with the movement. That is what it looks like to get through that workout. Couple of tips to remember. You got those handstand pushups going. Try to move as quickly as you can to keep that time under tension to a minimum. Breathe while you're doing it. Deep inhale as you come down. Explosive exhale as you press out on the handstand pushup. On the handstand walk, try to make sure you're very, very stacked with your arms straight above your shoulders. Think about, again, where you want to have that barbell overhead when you're doing a jerk or a push press or a strict press. It's the same thing when you're upside down doing a handstand walk. And then also on the handstand walk hold your breath for one or two steps maybe three or four until you find yourself where you have the momentum and then start breathing and breathe a lot while you're doing handstand walks because you've got to be upside down for a number of seconds there you might as well catch your breath while you're doing it and on those ring muscle ups in practice make sure you demonstrate that lockout i just pop those rings out turn your thumbs out just a smidge on those rings so that a judge can know that you have locked out so practice that uh, so that when it counts you are good to go there and ready to go. I hope you found that to be helpful, guys. Please click that subscribe button. It helps us grow this channel and click that like button as well. It lets YouTube know that you like videos like this. And also we're getting close to me not recording in the back of this RV as we are in Birmingham. We're looking for a house. Uh, we will travel and continue to travel, but not full time in the future. We don't think, but it'll be more part time. So we'll still probably have this, still take it around and, and travel. Man, I can't wait to have some room and not have a washer dryer behind me or my uh, vacuum cleaner. This is just this is just life. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful and if there are other specific movements you would like me to demonstrate or to explain further or talk about tips and tricks and optimizations on. Uh, just let me know. I'm happy to do it. I love doing videos like this. So get after it. Remember, your best days are ahead of you. Get bolder, not older. We'll see you next time.